Several key tax changes have come up in the budget for FY25. Let's take a look at what's new and what all this means for you. In the new budget, the standard deduction has increased from Rs 50,000 to Rs 75,000. Which means that people with annual incomes of up to Rs 7.75 lakhs will now enjoy tax-free status. Plus, the centre has changed the slab rates in the new tax regime which was introduced in FY21. The new regime has lower tax rates but fewer exemptions as compared to the old tax regime. Now there's a 5% reduction in tax for people earning between 6 to 8 lakhs and 9 to 10 lakhs. The government says that these changes are for the benefit of the new middle class which it defines as people who have come out of poverty over the last 10 years. The centre also says that these changes to tax slabs will result in savings of up to Rs 17,500 per year. Now experts say and many of you agree that this amounts to very little tax relief for the old salaried middle class which contributes more to income taxes than all corporate taxes combined. For all those investing in the stock market, the long term capital gains on all financial and non-financial assets has increased from 10% to 12.5%. The short term capital gains tax has also increased from 15% to 20%. And the exemption limit for capital gains is now set at Rs 1.25 lakhs per year. These changes have stirred controversy as they might deter investment in financial markets and real estate, potentially slowing down economic growth for the public and the country. Next. Let's talk about the Securities Transaction Tax, which is a tax on buying and selling securities listed on the Indian Stock Exchange. It's been doubled from 0.01% to 0.02%, meaning equity and index traders will pay twice as much tax. The government's intention is to discourage retail traders like you and I from spending household income on speculating in derivatives, which was labelled as gambling in the latest economic survey. But some experts argue that the STT hike could reduce market volumes and depth, negatively impact brokers and exchanges and potentially harm retail investors by increasing their trading costs. There are also concerns that this move might not effectively address the underlying issue of risky speculative trading. Next, the tax deducted at source or TDS rate on many payments has been reduced from 5% to 2% and the TDS rate on mutual funds or UTI unit repurchases has been abolished. Which means that when investors sell their mutual funds or UTI units, they won't have 20% of the sale automatically deducted as tax. Instead, they will receive the full amount from the sale and any applicable tax will be handled separately when they file their tax returns. Additionally, TDS rates for e-commerce operators are down from 1% to 0.1% and TDS payment delays up to the statement filing deadline have been decriminalized. Plus, a minor relief for salaried employees. You can now use TCS or tax cut at source as credits and adjust them against the TDS in your salary. Finally, the government intends to abolish the angel tax for investors of all classes, which is great news for all startups. Here's why. Angel tax is tax on the extra money investors paid when they bought shares above market value from unlisted startups. The tax makes it harder for startups to get enough funding. By abolishing it, investing in startups becomes easier and less costly, helping startups grow more smoothly. Regarding corporate tax, the government is lowering the tax rate on foreign companies from 40% to 35%. This is being seen as a move that will invite more businesses to India. That's all from us for now. Make sure to follow our page if you prefer your news without noise. Finally, a huge thank you to all our subscribers who helped make this video possible. You keep us going.